Hi! In this tutorial, I will show you how I got this 3D scan of a church 100% for free using free software and a free stock site known as Pixabay. Or you can go to Pexels. Okay, I'm just gonna give a quick rundown for the people who are impatient and who just wanna see results. All you have to do is go to a free stock site like Pexels or Pixabay and search for drone footage or anything you think can work for scanning. Um, you take that video, you extract the frames and you dump it into Meshroom. And once that's done calculating, you get a 3D model and you're done. So before we start, uh, you just gotta make sure you have the minimum requirements to do photo scanning. Uh, we're using a application called Meshroom and it specifically needs a NVIDIA GPU. Most NVIDIA GPUs that are modern, um, probably from 20, let's say 2070, 17 onwards, um, most of them do have CUDA. Um, and you're gonna need a beefy machine, unfortunately. Um, you can't follow this tutorial if you're on a Mac um, because this is just not on a Mac and yeah, basically you just need a CUDA enabled GPU. Okay, let's start the tutorial. Okay, so let's start with the tutorial. So there are multiple um, stock video, photos, whatever you can use, um, but we're gonna use some public domain ones. Um, if you want to resell that model, I would highly suggest using Pixabay or Pexels. Um, Pixabay doesn't have good quality videos. Um, Pexels does, but there is a downside. It's a lot of artsy, color graded filter videos. So Pixabay is usually where you get like bad videos, but they're actually like not color graded or that well directed. So this one would actually be a good candidate for like photo scanning. So um, to get best scanning results, you wanna type in um, drone footage. Let's type in drone. Um, also, you want to change images to videos. And now we just got to look at some cool drone photos we can use. Um, ideally, the drone has to go around the subject, um, not forwards and backwards. Um, this one can work, but there's a lot of moving cars and people and stuff like that. So you ideally want a static scene um, and the camera going around the object. Um, so I did find something cool, uh, the other day, so drone church. Okay, let's see this. Um, this one, I think it's this one, but it wasn't like sunset. Uh, there must be another one. Um, oh yeah, this one. This one's pretty good. Um, I'll leave a few links in the description to some videos um, if anyone wants to scan or just try this out. But uh, yeah, let's uh, get this guy. Um, yeah, this is perfect. Um, it's a cloudy day and the camera is going around the object. So the photo scanning app does have a lot of detail to work. And a huge benefit to this is it's in 4K. So uh, we're just gonna download this at maximum resolution. Okay, cool. Now, whilst that is downloading, let's go get the photo scanning app. Um, Meshroom is a really great alternative. Meshroom. Um, the other application I like to use is called Zephyr, Zephyr, Zephyr 3D. So there is a free option, but you can only use 50 images. And then there's a light option, which I don't know how much it costs. It's a little bit pricey, but it's worth it. And that limits you to 500 images, which is actually more than enough for a pretty decent scan. But uh, for this tutorial, let's just use the free app. Um, just gotta find the download button. Try Meshroom now. Cool, and just gotta wait for that to download. Uh, oh yeah, um, also to clarify, um, you're gonna need a NVIDIA CUDA enabled GPU. Um, this, I don't think this does work on CPU, so you're gonna need at least Windows 10 and a 
NVIDIA CUDA GPU, but uh, in my case, I have a RTX 2070, I think. Um, so I'm, I'm good with this. Let's go download this. And this takes us to a dodge looking site, but it is downloading. One gigabyte. Okay, now with the video downloaded, uh, you want to put this in a folder and just give it a much more easier to follow name. Um, now we just need to get some information about this video, especially the resolution. So you want to right click and go to properties and go to details and this will give us the resolution. This has to, be, this has to match exactly in Blender. Um, okay, so what you want to do is open up a new Blender file and you want to go to video editing. If you can't find video editing, you click on file, file, new, video editing, and that's where it is. Uh, just close all the tabs we're not going to need, and let's, oh, before we drag in our video clip, make sure the resolution matches exactly to the video's resolution. So I think it's multiplied by two, that gives you 4K. Okay, cool, and I don't like these channels, so I'm just gonna take it away. Um, you go to view and disable channels. Okay, now let's bring in our video. Just click and drag it from a file browser and it should be there. Um, it does have an audio track, we can delete it or we can just leave it, but it's gonna bother me, so I'm gonna delete the audio track. And you'll see the entire video is 890 frames from this little segment here, so. 890 in our end timeline and that should match it now we can export all of these frames and wait for like seven hours for it to process or we can export every third or fourth frame which will speed up the process a lot but there is a downside to it you might not get an accurate scan out of it usually it's the more the merrier but i mean this is a tutorial. I'm just going to show you the basics on how to do this. Um, and yeah, so what what we can do to um, render out each third or fourth frame is we go to our output properties and change the step. Step means it will skip a few frames. So step, let's make that every fourth frame. Uh, what is 890 divided by four? 890 divided by four. That will give us 223 frames, which I think might be enough. Um, if you're gonna get bad results, or if you're getting bad results, you maybe don't wanna use the step function. Um, and for the outputs, let's change its PNG so it doesn't compress the video even further. Um, you don't need RGBA or RGB 16 if it's just a single MP4 from a free stock site. Um, so these settings should be good. And um, let's just copy and paste our project file or project folder. And I'm gonna paste it and I'm gonna make a new folder by adding a slash, call it frames and make sure it's a folder by adding another slash. And then Blender will generate those frames. And now we just got to click render animation and just wait a little bit. Okay, so um, once Blender is done outputting the frames, um, it's time to move on to Meshroom. So let's go back to our um, project files, um, back to your project folder, and let's copy and paste the Meshroom. Um, it doesn't matter where you copy and paste it, um, as long as it's somewhere in your machine, it should work. Okay, cool, extract Meshroom. Uh, I use 7-Zip, it is the best extractor without any pop-ups or renewals, so I highly recommend using this app. Now we just gotta wait. Okay, with Meshroom extracted, um, let's open up the extracted file and click on this Meshroom EXE. In fact, I'm just gonna open up a new project folder. Um, oh, Meshroom opened up on a different window. Uh, just keep an eye out for that. Okay, so now I just gotta locate uh, all the uh, frames. So I'm gonna control A, 
drag and drop these images in. Cool. And honestly, I have no idea how Meshroom works. It's just, for me, I just drag and drop and hope for the best. So all your images are loaded and you're gonna have to save this first. So save it somewhere. Um, let's go to, I'm just gonna have to blur this out. Okay, cool. And we're gonna have to save this into a folder. So uh, let's make a new folder and call it church scan data. Again, there is no necessary specific naming schemes or anything. It's up to you what you do. If you wanna be neat, go for that. Or if you wanna be like me and just give it a dumb name. Okay, cool. Uh, file name, I'm just gonna say church and that's it. Save. And once that is, yeah, that's done. Now we just got to click start and hope for the best. Um, before I do this, um, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna make up a recommendation of, you gotta have at least more than six gigabytes of VRAM, um, at least. My machine is at eight gigabytes, um, but there are some instances where it will trash or you will run out of VRAM. So. Yeah, just keep an eye out for that. Um, if you do stumble into onto those problems, uh, maybe try reducing your images and just picking the most key points. They still need to have some similarity to them, but yeah, I would recommend just reducing your images. Okay, enough talk, let's click start. Okay, uh, now it's going. So let me tell you a little bit how this works. Um, if it's green, it means it's completed. Um, the orange bit means it's still doing the thing, and the blue bit means it still has to be done. If you see red anywhere, that means, uh, yes, it's Okay, cool. I'm gonna, I'm, okay, cool. I'm and let it run. Okay, so uh, just to hop back in this tutorial, um, so I left it going for a while and you can definitely see it's starting to pick up points. The more points you have, the better. Um, you'll see some floating points, which I really can't explain, but I'm hoping the uh, algorithm won't pick that up. Um, you can change the point size to this and it looks like a solid model. It's actually getting the textures and yeah, it's looking good. Um, this does take a while, so just be prepared to wait like two or three hours, um, maybe even more if you have more photos, but yeah, this is looking good. Um, you can also see the cameras. You can see the path the drone took to get this video. And yeah, um, I'm gonna stop recording and see what result ends up. And yeah, I'm gonna stop the recording and just wait and see what happens. Okay, and uh, yeah, it seems like the model is done. Um, I have no idea how Meshroom exactly works, um, but as long as everything has a green line, then that should be good. Um, now, we need to actually get a model. So let's open a fresh copy of Blender and then let's go to our project files. So we saved it under church scan data and then church cache and then it would be under texturing. It would have a weird name, but that should be it. Cool, um, let's delete everything and press Q and I think it's an OBJ. So let me grab the file. Uh, you can just click and drag a file into Blender's browser and that should open it up. Now, this is gonna be heavy and messy. It's not a clean model. Well, that was fast. And as you can see, we have our scanned church. Now, what you wanna do is ideally you wanna align it. So an easy way to do that is going into one of your perspective views or order graphic views, pressing one, one, five and three on your keyboard. Um, I think that's it. And you just want to flatten this out as possible. 
um, basically match the horizon or levelness levelness of it, and that should be it. Now let's take that church to the center. Uh, it helps using your 3D cursor for this. So to change it, you click on this one, or you press dot on your numpad, or no, 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 just dot on your keyboard, and you should get these options. So now it should not be rotating from the origin, it should be rotating from the 3D cursor. Um, and I think this is pretty level as we can get. Now let's delete a lot of junk. So we hop into edit mode and be prepared because it's gonna be dense. Um, go into wireframe mode and don't select everything that's gonna lag. We're gonna press B for box cut, and we're only gonna select the section we need. Now we're gonna press I to invert, and we're gonna press delete, uh, let's say vertices. This does take a while, especially if the model is dense. If it's dense, it's good. Um, Trust me, it can get way more dense than this. So sometimes you'll have to do the cleanup or I think you can delete vertices in sculpting mode. That would be the fastest. Uh, just to give you an idea, look how dense this is. Um, okay, let's hop out of editing mode and let's just bring this thing up to scale. Like, just give it a scale. Okay, cool. Let's go to material view and see how it looks. Hey, there we go. A 3D model from free stock footage and it's pretty decent ish given it's like a compressed mp4 and given we used free software um as i said before zephyr zephyr i don't know that application alongside um reality capture is pretty good solutions but it is also paid um i don't know if reality capture is paid but anyway you get the idea you just use free stock free stock video from pixabay or pexels and you can extract a pretty decent mesh um i wouldn't call this like a foreground mesh but like i mean for mid ground it holds up but yeah that's basically it you have a free model from a free video using free software and yeah bye